I felt so much guilt and shame and I never expected that I would feel that way during my pregnancy. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Allie Lambert and in today's video, I'm sharing my real, raw, honest deets about my first trimester. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to these feelings and these details and that's why I wanted to share openly and honestly because I think it would have really helped me had I seen a video like this early on in my pregnancy. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because it really helps to support my channel. All right, let's get into it, shall we? I used to love watching these videos, especially before I got pregnant, and I always looked forward to being able to make my own video about this topic someday. And now that we're here, I thought it would be fun to kind of take you through the journey of my first trimester from the initial symptoms that I felt that made me kind of think that I might be pregnant all the way through the end of my first trimester. Okay, so keep in mind that we were trying to get pregnant, so I definitely, was you know looking and i was aware for signs and symptoms to be coming so it wasn't like it was out of the blue and i didn't understand you know why certain things were happening i was definitely prepared and kind of waiting for them to come so the first thing that i really felt were my boobs now this video is going to be pretty tmi so if you're a guy maybe want to pass on this one but for all you ladies it doesn't happen for all of us, but my boobs were so incredibly sore. Like I remember my husband gave me a hug just a few days before I officially found out that I was pregnant and I could barely contain myself. I just, I wanted to push him away because it hurt so bad. It's very different than like when you're on your period and your boobs hurt and they're just kind of sore, it's like this deep soreness and your nipples hurt and your boobs hurt and it's just, yeah, they're just really, really sore. So that was kind of like my first sign of, okay, this is interesting, like this is different. So of course I, you know, looked up a bunch of videos, went to Google and tried to see whether that might be one of the initial first symptoms. The next sign for me was that I started to get pretty bloated and this was within the first week or two that I figured out that I was pregnant and I knew that that could be a pretty common sign and it wasn't like super intense. It definitely got worse later on in the first trimester, but I definitely was feeling some bloating and I was like, huh, this is interesting. Okay, so another big sign for me was this. So my cycles are pretty consistently inconsistent. So every month there'll be 28 days and then the next month there'll be 34 days. So I actually wasn't sure the month that we started um, trying at this particular time which cycle it was, whether it was a short cycle or a long cycle. So I looked up in my app and I realized that I was definitely a few days later um, and this was for my shorter cycle. I was definitely a few days later than I normally was. And that kind of cued me into, huh, this is interesting. I wonder if something might be coming. Um, and again, I think paired with like the breast soreness and the bloating, I was a little bit more skeptical that something might be going on. So I had a feeling that I might be pregnant that month. And I honestly was really, really nervous because the month before I never anticipated that I would be one of those people who would just be so heartbroken and crushed when we didn't get pregnant in a certain month. And I will definitely talk about this in a future video because I think this is a much bigger topic about like feeling ready to be pregnant. Um, but I was super, super sad and I was just like overthinking it and I felt really, really bad and I never thought that I would feel that way. And so I was really trying to like wait it out and not take a test because I didn't want to feel that way again. Um, and so this was on a Thursday and I'll never forget. I remember Ben came up to me. It was like that morning before he went to work and he was like, so did you get your period? And I just like so instinctively said yes, because I had an inkling that we were pregnant. But of course, you know, I, I 
I feel like a lot of women dream about, you know, telling their spouse in this like really cool and, you know, drawn out way. And so I didn't want to just like tell him then that I thought I might be pregnant. So I just said like, yep, I got my period. And then um, that night we had a Christmas party for his work. And it's so crazy because everybody at the party was talking about like, oh my gosh, like are you guys thinking about having kids, starting a family, like kids are the best, you're gonna love them. And like all the while I'm having to hold in that like I think I'm pregnant, but obviously nobody knows that, he doesn't know that. So it was kind of an interesting like 24 hour wait. So the next day I was teaching a spin class that I always teach on Friday mornings. And I remember that I went to teach that spin class and I came home and again, I just I had this feeling that I should take a test and again, I was so nervous. I just remember putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And finally, I took a test and it honestly wasn't super clear whether I was pregnant or not. Um, it was definitely one of those tests where, you know, it, it has like a faint second line, but it's not like super defined. So of course, again, I like went and watched all these videos and like Googled it and I was pretty certain that it said that I was pregnant, but again, I wanted to be sure. So I did what any logical female would do. I like ran to Walmart and bought like six other tests. Of course I had to buy a different brand cause I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was, you know, clear across the board. So I came home, I took two more tests. Sure enough, it was positive. So after I saw the positive, I remember that I texted my husband. I knew he had this work event that night and he wasn't supposed to get home until like 8 p.m. And I couldn't imagine, you know, keeping this secret and I didn't want to tell him over text. So I remember saying like, hey babe, can you, you know, cancel your event tonight or like maybe not stay very long? And he was like, why are you acting weird? Cause that's just not something that I would ask him to do. You know, he's, like we're both pretty independent, we both live our own lives. And um, you know, I just I just wanted to tell him in this really special way because um, a lot of you might not know this, but his absolute dream in life is to be a dad. And I knew that this was gonna be like such a big special moment for him. And so I wanted to make it that way. Um, but let me just tell you that that did not happen. So that week, our roommate, who normally travels like all year long for um, yoga and is hardly ever home, he happened to be there that weekend and he had friends visiting. And so we had a full house. My husband didn't get home until like 8 p.m. that night. And I just felt super flustered. And honestly, it was like a total disaster. And I was kind of heartbroken that it totally did not go the way that I hoped to. All right, so bear in mind that we found out that we were pregnant right around week five. And, you know, as a fitness professional, as a health professional, I always dreamed of having this like super healthy pregnancy and I would eat healthy and I would exercise. And, you know, a lot of you who have already had children are probably laughing because this is probably like the first lesson in motherhood where, you know, you make all these plans and then you have to completely surrender to them because that just was not the case. So I remember it was Saturday morning, the day after, you know, I had shared with Ben that we were pregnant and I like woke up and I was so excited and I went to Trader Joe's and I bought all these amazing healthy groceries, you know, and we eat pretty healthy as is. And I was just so excited to like start things off on the right foot. And then on Monday morning, I woke up and I was like, is this a sick joke? What is this that I'm feeling? I felt so nauseous. And mind you, I kind of entered this pretty naive because my mom didn't really have a lot of symptoms. She wasn't really sick. She wasn't ill. She had like pretty easy pregnancy. So I, for some reason, thought that I would follow in her footsteps. Definitely not. I remember that morning I was training at 5 a.m. and I got up and I made my celery juice that I drink before I drink my smoothie and I nearly vomited on the way to work and I was like, this is awful. Like I feel so terrible and it took everything in me to stay present with people and to just like not hurl on them. and. I really hoped that maybe this would just kind of be like an early on symptom. And as we'll talk about, this was something that stuck around for a lot longer than I probably would have wanted. 
Which brings me to the next sort of lie that I feel like we hear, which is morning sickness. Okay, morning sickness for me, no, no, no. It was all day sickness. It was morning, afternoon, and oftentimes it was actually the worst at night. And I just remember thinking like, why did I not know this? Like, why was it so known that it was just morning sickness when really for so many women that I started asking, they were like, oh no, you know, this is like totally typical. This often will last all throughout the day. And that was definitely the case. One of the hardest parts I found was that I just, I couldn't talk to anyone about my symptoms. Ben was really, really passionate and adamant that we wait to tell our families until we had the first ultrasound and we knew that everything was looking good. And I totally understood Understood. And honestly, if I were to do it again, I would probably just go ahead and tell my mom and my sister because there were so many get togethers where I was trying to not act weird, but I was just like feeling so sick and I would go and I would either fall asleep on the couch and just be like completely out of it and like not super social or I would be really hungry and, and like a lot of times there wouldn't really be a lot to eat there. So I would make suggestions of, you know, things that we would go and eat. And in hindsight, I remember my family being like, I thought that was so weird that you were so adamant about like going and get a bagel and cream cheese. And again, as we'll talk about, like there's just so many things that this, this human that you're growing just takes over. And, you know, obviously I love bagels, but it's not something that I would really like go out of my way to get. So that was kind of bizarre. And it was just hard to, not be able to tell our families. So we actually went to the doctor pretty early. I think it was week seven. It was on Christmas Eve. We had our first ultrasound and everything looked great and we were really excited. We had kind of already like pre-planned how we were gonna tell our families. And my family has this tradition where we always do this like big pizza party where we make homemade pizza and the wood fire oven and it's so much fun. It's such a blast. And so we decided that we would tell everybody um, on my side of the family on that particular night. And so what we did was, um, I'll put this picture up here of my niece. We got these shirts for my niece that said um, being upgraded to big cousin in 2020 because she's the only um, grandkid in the family right now. So that was really, really fun. Although we had to wait all the way till the end of the night and I was just like itching to get this off my chest. It had been, Again, it had been like almost three weeks since we had like first learned about the news. So I just, I wanted everyone to know and it was really cute. We packaged it up and when she opened her Christmas gift, she kept being like, I don't think this is mine. You know, like I'm not a big cousin because she has a um, another cousin that's a, you know, a year older than her. And she was like, Livy's a big cousin. And so people were kind of like confused and kind of queuing in. And then all of a sudden, like my sister got you know, a good clear view of the shirt. And she and my mom like right away knew what was happening and everyone else took like a second and they just like lunged over and hugged me. And um, I remember like my dad was crying and it was just like, it was such a special moment. And I, I secretly wish that we could have gotten on film cause I wish I could like relive it every single day. But I'm also glad that we just, you know, got to have that like private moment as a family. Um, but it was so, so much fun. And so we finally got to tell our families. We told my husband's family a couple days later at a restaurant and that was really special too. So everybody knew. Let's keep riding with the symptoms though because there's definitely more that I want to share here. All right, this is the piece of the video that I wanna be really honest and raw and real about. So as a fitness professional, I felt so much guilt and shame about my diet and the fact that it was so far from perfect. It was so far from my typical healthy. And the reason I think it's so important to share this is um, I spent a lot of time in the early parts of my first trimester, you know, beating myself up, comparing myself to, you know, other people who were able to just carry on their normal diets and their pregnancy. And what I want to say is that your journey is your journey and your journey is unique and it's beautiful and it's totally valid. And so if you're someone that's able to continue to eat healthy, amazing. But if you're someone like me who literally could barely keep food down without dry heaving like every hour on the hour, 
you just gotta do what you gotta do, sister. And you know, when I finally did talk to my midwife, she was like, yeah, this is really, really common, especially if you have a lot of nausea. And she called it the brown diet. And so basically anything that was brown was about all I could eat, you know, bread, crackers, um, you know, mac and cheese. They say that you crave a lot of things like from your childhood, which I've actually found to be so wildly true in my pregnancy all throughout. Um, Cause I am obviously not in my first trimester. I am filming this nearly in my third trimester, but I got so many requests for this video that I wanted to, you know, document it both for you so that you can have this as a support and, and just realize that you're never alone, but also I wanted to be able to document it for myself too. The reason that I feel like it's so important to be open about this is I think that, you know, we as women, we are our own worst critic. We could be so hard on ourselves and there is a lot of you know, guilt and shame wrapped up in the fact that there's all these changes happening and truly there's not a lot of control that we have. And I remember listening to quite a few podcasts before I was even pregnant, before we were thinking about getting pregnant. And I remember listening to people that I really, really admire in the wellness space talk about just, you know, how you shouldn't use pregnancy, pregnancy as an excuse to, you know, eat unhealthy and, um, you know, you should try to continue your normal diet. And I'll be honest, like thinking back to those episodes, it really made me feel bad. It made me feel like there was something wrong with me. And I remember I cried a lot because I just felt like I was such a fraud that I couldn't you know, do what I normally did. And I had so many conversations just, you know, with my husband and my sister and they just let me know that, you know, it's okay. This is short lived and you'll be fine. And once the midwife told me that the baby essentially strips all of the nutrients from me, so she's getting what she needs and you know, I'm the one that's kind of more malnourished that I felt a lot better just knowing that, okay, she's healthy. That's the only thing that matters. I just, I couldn't stomach any veggies. I couldn't stomach any protein. Water for like a good chunk of my first trimester tasted absolutely disgusting. And it's so funny, I've had clients in the past who talked about like, oh, I don't like water. Like I don't like the taste of water. And I always felt like that was so weird. And then being pregnant, I was like, oh my gosh, I get it. There's just something about the aftertaste of it that I couldn't handle. And Obviously you wanna stay really hydrated, so I would put like these noon tablets in my water bottle just to try to keep drinking, but it was just a weird time where, you know, you, you feel nauseous so you don't wanna eat, but really the acidity is building up. This is what I've been told, and so you wanna eat all these frequent small meals, but then, you know, the minute you eat something, you start to feel nauseous again. You start to throw up or dry heave or, or whatever, and it's just this weird cycle that went on for probably like five or six weeks that I just, I felt like I was living in the twilight zone. I could not wait for it to be over. I didn't wanna like rush my pregnancy, but also for me personally, that was just a really hard time and I was just trying to survive. So if you've related to any of these symptoms and if you're beating yourself up or you're feeling bad, again, I just want to reassure you that you are growing a human and this is a legit job and it's not easy and every single one of us experiences it differently. So please, please give yourself so much grace because I think it's so crucial to getting through this time and just realizing that it won't always be this way. All right, so let's talk about the nausea because I tried everything to try and help with it. I tried the Trader Joe's ginger chews. I tried lemon tea. I tried peppermint. Um, I tried all the stereotypical things and honestly, nothing worked for me. I'm normally a huge fan of ginger, couldn't even stomach it. I did get turned onto these things called preggy pops and you can get them at Target and get them on Amazon but I guess they have a little bit of B12 in them, but there is something about the fact that they were just a, like a little bit sour. I would keep those stuffed in my purse so that anytime I you know, was flying or I was out and about and there was weird smells, and oh my gosh, the smells first trimester were just like so potent. It would, and I, if I would suck on that, it would just kind of keep things at bay. It would definitely help me feel a lot better faster. 
That's something that I forgot to talk about was the smells. I could barely open the refrigerator the first trimester without like gagging. Like I remember we did take out for probably four to five weeks on end because my husband doesn't cook. I'm the main cook and I love to, but I just couldn't even stand the thought of food. Couldn't stand the, like the idea of planning it, cooking it, smelling it. Like if it was prepared for me, it was okay but I just, I couldn't even be near the refrigerator. So the smells were real. The last thing that really helped me, and I didn't drink it a lot, was real lemonade. I remember we went to a couple of Christmas parties where they had like the country time lemonade, which again, is not something that I would ever normally drink except for in my childhood. But there was something about the sugar that settled my stomach. There was something about the sour and the tartness that Oh my gosh, it was so good. And it, it just makes me crave it even right now. So other than that, I really didn't have a lot of cravings in my first trimester. I felt like for me, it was more aversions. So I was having to get really creative with the things that I did want to eat and that I was eating. Um, nothing really particular comes to mind. I've had a lot more cravings like in my second and my third trimester that I'll definitely share um, in these other videos, but not a ton of cravings in my first. It was more just like avoiding a lot of my typical foods. Um, you know, normally I'm a big veggie and protein person and those were just like non-existent in my diet in the first trimester. Um, so for me, that lasted until about week 14 when we went on vacation and then I was slowly able to add in like some vegetables and some protein, even though the nausea like didn't go away. Um, a lot of the aversions were starting to lift, which I was so, so happy about. Last thing that I'll share is that for me, one last thing that helped with my nausea and my symptoms was just to try to keep moving. I know that this particular topic, again, can be a hard one and a sensitive one because for so many, it doesn't feel good to move. It doesn't feel good to exercise. And I just want you to know that, that is okay. It won't last forever. And I found that even though I was moving really slow and I wasn't necessarily getting a ton out of it, it helped me to sort of plan my workouts around the most like, like high point of my nausea during the day because something about the endorphins really helped me to just feel a little bit better. So again, I was really moving slow. I was starting to modify by like week seven. Certain things just didn't feel good on my core for me personally. And um, yeah, it just felt good to move. Walking has um, always felt so good. And so that's something that I, you know, made sure to do a lot of because um, it's so easy and gentle on your body and it's great, great form of exercise. So that's another thing that I really felt like was just like a big, big help in alleviating a little bit of that daily nausea. So if you are pregnant and you are looking for some pregnancy safe workouts, I actually have filmed quite a bit during quarantine. You know, what else are you gonna do? I really felt like YouTube lacked workouts that were um, fun, that had great music. I'm such a big fan of, the, of them having great music um, and being challenged, you know, as a, as a trainer and a fitness professional, and I'm sure for you, if you've worked out, you know, just because we're pregnant doesn't mean that we don't want to feel challenged. So I created these workouts. They're really, really fun. They're so, so effective. Um, I will make sure to put some here and at the end of the video. So if you're looking for something that you can do at home with really minimal minimal equipment, but still get your sweat on, be sure to check out those videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. That is my first trimester recap. And I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you relate to any of these symptoms, if you had your own unique symptoms, I would love to hear from you in the comments. So if you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Friday about fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle. Thanks for watching. Bye.